Okay, and um, welcome everyone to um, our second uh, in our set of Fulverton Lifecycle um, series of webinars. Um, so if you guys were not able to join us for the last one, uh, our very first webinar um, in this series was focused on the very first week, so week zero here at the school. Uh, this week we're going to move on to the first trimester, so the, the first three months of the program. Um, so joining me, we have uh, some friends here you guys can all see. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have you guys introduce yourselves. Let us know what cohort you're in and also like what the general start date for that was so people know kind of how long you've been in the program. And you can go. Cool. Uh, my name is Sammy Azad. I was in cohort seven. We actually started on September 4th last year. Okay. Uh, I'm Spencer Taylor, cohort five. We started January 2018. I'm Becky. I'm also part of cohort five. We started last year, January cool. 18. Awesome. Okay. So uh, today we are focusing specifically on, um, on the first three months here at the program. And uh, we know it's a pretty intense period, but I want to hear from you guys. Uh, just generally, what, what are the types of technologies that we even cover in the curriculum the first trimester here? Um, so you don't have to go deep into the projects yet, but just what types of technologies are you exposed to? Yeah, we start off with uh, Bash, so it's a lot of command line uh, scripting uh, inside like the terminal or the command prompt of your computer based on like if you're in Mac or Windows. Yeah, um, yeah and then the C programming language is a relatively low level language, so um, we learn concepts like memory allocation, um, how to write functions in C, pointers, and yeah, and then we do two big projects um, on that first trimester that mm -hmm. utilizes the, that the C language. Mm -hmm. cool. And yeah. also the one that everyone forgets to mention, GitHub. Oh yeah, GitHub. <laughs> oh, Which is yeah. like a whole other thing once we right. yeah. yeah. Vagrant, GitHub, um, good Git practices. Mm -hmm. Vim and Emacs. Yeah, text, text, text editors. editors. Text editors, right? Yeah, yeah. there's projects made by text editors. Okay, what's your favorite text editor? Emacs. For those of you who don't know, there are two camps usually, Vim and Emacs, and then the rare people who use Nano. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're okay, why, why, why Emacs? Um, well, we were introduced to, I was introduced to Emacs in one of the tasks for applying to Culberton. Yep. Yeah. So that's all I knew before here. Um, I try using both. Like, mm -hmm. Vim has like two modes and it's yeah. super confusing. Uh, <laughs> I like Emacs because like once you understand like all of the keyboard shortcuts, mm -hmm. like moving around in Emacs is like so fast and intuitive, like switching files and all that. Too. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. great. Definitely. Right. Emacs has a lot but of customizations too, Vim, like packages. I would say, I kind of feel like I should know Vim because yeah. if you're into DevOps, they do use Vim a lot. Mm. Yeah. But actually that's one of the requirements useful okay so at least knowing the fundamentals of both yeah and then maybe settling in one camp yeah. to yeah. really master it yeah, yeah. but you should settle settle in emacs okay yeah. so okay. <laughs> camp emacs that's great Definitely. you're very much <laughs> um i'm also emacs emacs yeah all and right i think i think it's like that first exposure uh, actually when i started my application process as well uh, just because a, a random friend of mine told me about Nano, I didn't know anything about text editors, so that was, he was just like, hey, you should check out Nano. So that's what I was working on at the very beginning. And as soon uh -huh. as Julian Barbier found out, he was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so um, if you guys have taken my tech challenge for the level three, there is a question in there where you have to install Emacs, and there's a joke in the question title about Nano. So. That's, mm, nice. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. Um, a little history. Uh, a little Easter egg. Nice. Easter egg for you. Um, okay, so we cover a lot of stuff, uh, particularly I think in the first couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. some of that GitHub stuff, um, mm -hmm. some of the vagrants, um, and, and the bash stuff. Mm -hmm. But what is like the meat of the first three months? Like, what is the main technology that you guys use? C. C. Okay, C. Yeah, I alluded to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Why? Why C? Um. So C is like 
you have like higher level languages like JavaScript and Python and all that um, that most people use. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like learning fundamentals, C is like so close to assembly code, which is like the machine language mm -hmm. that you don't get like a lot of functionality like given to you. You have to like do everything on your own. And that includes like if you want to print to the screen, you have to figure out how to like write that code to make that happen. It's not just like you don't just get a, a full like tool belt. You have to like build the tools yourself. So you get like sees like this empty tool belt and you're learning how to uh, make your own tools to do the job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then afterwards when you're learning higher level languages like Python, Ruby, JavaScript, um, you're okay with dealing with abstractions because you already know what works um, on the lower level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you a look inside the computer itself because even Linux is written on C, right? Mm -hmm. the, a lot of Linux is written on C. So when you're like typing in Bash or even doing anything Linux related, you kind of get a feel for what's actually happening behind the scenes because you know C. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so what what does a project even look like here? So you you have these projects in C or whatever language or tool. What how does that flow go? What happens? Like, what is an actual project like here at the school? So the project gets released like midnight of the day that it's due. Um, in the beginning, you have a lot of like one day projects, but they can become two, three day, even some are a week or like big ones or two weeks. And so you have, it's basically just a consort, a consortment of tasks. And you have to complete those tasks by the time the, the, the deadline comes up. So like, yeah, like piggybacking off what Sandy said, like the project drops, um, we get like a, we find out what the project is about for like C, it could be, okay, today we're gonna do like for loops or today we're gonna do pointers. And then there'll be a bunch of like tasks that need to happen um, that will essentially like teach you how to use that or like how to do whatever today's topic is. So if it's for loops, it'll present you with a bunch of different like loops mm -hmm. and uh, you have to figure out like, you have to be able to write the code in order to make that happen. And you also get like a list of resources at the beginning too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, so like um, part of becoming a good developer is to utilize the documentation and look up resources on your own. Mm -hmm. So um, we give you, or they give you a uh, list of readings in the beginning so then you, read through it so you kind of give an idea about the concepts and then you could go on from there. Um, and then there's a framework that you follow. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, it's like go through the reading. Um, if you can't figure it out from the reading, Google it. Um, and then uh, like, and then try to go like mull over it yourself and then eventually ask a peer, ask a TA, ask very, very, not, rarely. Not, very rarely do you ask the staff. <laughs> But, <laughs> Usually, but, uh, yeah, like, you hardly like it's not that you can't it's just right. you never get to that point yeah because there's always usually you find out yeah, yeah there's someone in this building that has the answer before you even like have to get to the step and, and that's how it's like in the real world exactly mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah you don't ask the ceo all the, all the, like hard-hitting questions unless julian is looming behind you yeah. <laughs> and then he's like oh what's this going what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> and you ask a question, and depending on if it's like mandatory or extra, like it'll be like, oh, it's extra. No, you can figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I have not asked him the question. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So you mentioned you have these projects and you have these deadlines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens if you can't get things done by a deadline, or like you're really struggling? So like you're you're trying to use the framework, you're trying to do all the reading and ask people, and you're just like there's some concept or something that's like you just cannot understand or what do you do it's not over yeah, right? so you said after the deadline if deadline is coming or yeah like you're you're either stressing out that you're not going to get something done uh -huh. um or maybe the deadline did come and you and you totally bombed the project like but you still need to understand that concept what yeah. do you do um well i would say like if it's the project is like almost like it's almost time, like don't stress out about it. Uh, an important thing to note about Holborn is like the grade is not really what matters. It's like your understanding of that topic is what matters. And so 
you know, when you get here, because like you're so used to like this traditional like school system, you, you think about your grade and you're like stressing out like, oh, I don't understand this. Oh, I'm going to fail. But like, you can't fail. Um, so if you're brain farting, like at the end, like I was just saying, like, go to sleep, <laughs> like go get some rest and then come back tomorrow and like get some more help because we have like second deadline submissions and also PW. A caveat to that is the grade does sort of indicate your progress and how much you did take away from the project. So even though it's not done by the first deadline, you do want to finish the project to the best of your ability after. And one of the great tools at Holborn is we have PLD, where you can get together with your peers and actually work on any concepts that you had difficulty understanding or any problems you had difficulty finishing in the projects. Yeah, I'd like to add to that. Um, I would def definitely recommend taking advantage of PLD because mm -hmm. we are um, from a non-traditional CS background, so there's a lot of gap in theory. Um, most of the times you could find out how to do things technically, like through a, just like to solve a problem, but you don't quite understand all the concepts about like say memory allocation. So like you definitely want to clear that up early on, step by step. As you progress through the program. Mm -hmm. yeah. So segue into PLDs. You guys mentioned yeah. them a couple times already. Oh, yes. what? Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> what is a PLD? What does PLD stand for? Um, and and you already touched on it, but talk to me a little bit more in depth about like what happens on a PLD day. Okay. Uh, PLD stands for Peer Learning Day, and they're like one of two mandatory days that are here at Holborn. Um, Essentially what happens is whatever projects that we were working on like immediately prior to PLD day uh, We then use PLD day to go over that project to make sure that everyone like understands it It's just kind of like that Reinforcement to like if you were struggling with like question or task six on a project We're gonna go in depth on it. We're gonna get like by a whiteboard and we're gonna talk about it and I like to have the person who's like struggling be at the board and we, the rest of us kind of just like walk that person through it and answer their questions as we go along. Yeah. So you get um, grouped into groups prior on the day prior. And then, um, yeah, basically there's a loose structure. Your objective is mainly to go over your trouble spots in the project. Um, and yeah, I would advise people who struggle with the project to like take advantage of that and yeah. try to uh, articulate code because that's a useful skill too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one thing we added to PLD recently was we're doing this sort of stand-up style. So stand-up is a time where different groups get together and talk about what they talked about during the day. And um, so now groups are intercommunicating the oh, things they cool. went over yeah during the day so that maybe one group didn't think of something and the other group said it and now two groups are doing something and it helps everyone a lot more to exchange these ideas yeah. i also notice a lot of groups um, these days are doing deep dives into mm -hmm. like say web infrastructure and like, <laughs> we haven't done i'm like wow this is actually oh, yeah. 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 you learn a lot <laughs> when i say like Try to learn the concept, you guys go above and beyond. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. It's ever changing. Holbrand's yeah. curriculum is very adaptive. Yeah, so talk to me a little bit about this. So, Spence, you're like, <laughs> what, you're just a couple months ahead of Sammy, yeah. right? And you're like, things are totally different now than they were with you. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about like why that is, how that works. Mm -hmm. You kind of started talking about it, Sammy, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, why that is, we so we have like these town halls, and actually the last town hall, there was a lot of talk, there was a lot of talk about PLDs not being, not working for everyone, or maybe groups weren't as on task as, uh, the, as other people wanted them to be, so now we've incorporated this sort of intercommunication or stand-up style briefing after, uh, after halves of the day, so that uh, so that people can express their objectives that they set to you during the day and other things. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we made a major change to PLD as well. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah initially, you probably don't know about this. Really? Initially, yeah. they were, oh. um, so we were split into two color houses. Mm. That's where we were around like a group of 50. Yeah, like 50 of us. Students, so they would split, mm. us, split us up around like 20-ish people each. Mm -hmm. And then 
our color houses had one huge PLD <laughs> where there's like two speakers, one lead speaker and then the second substitute speaker or like assistant, the assistant speaker. speaker. Yeah. And they would be guiding everyone through all the process. Wow. Yeah. And the and then, process. So there would be just two people doing PLD and everyone else like sitting and asking questions. <laughs> but like, it, I think like we were like trying it out but then it wasn't working. Like there was like this one POV, like there was like a like a girl like was stressed out and like there was like other conversations going on. Like this is just too much. Like people who were uh, yeah, people who were like afraid to speak out, like uh didn't feel comfortable because it was such a large group. So we wanted to make the group smaller to make it like a little bit more intimate. And yeah, it's nice to see that POV is still getting expanded. Yeah. 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 And when I was a student, we didn't have PLD. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you also had binary on paper, right? Yeah. yeah. Binary <laughs> on paper? Yeah. Actually, I oh, like wow. that. Actually, what? Back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah feedback from our mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also actually not just the students, it's also feedback from mentors. You know, like mm -hmm. they'll let us know how, how our students are performing once you guys get jobs. You know, like they'll say, oh hey, the students are doing great, except for they're not great at writing tests. Mm -hmm. This was a while back, don't worry, you guys, you guys got the, you guys got to work on tests. But this is before we had like um, testing as like part of some of our projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, we take that feedback and we say, oh yeah, like that's a really good feedback. How, do, how can we change so that students can gain that experience? Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. And so th this school is ever evolving. It's based on feedback. It's based on iteration, trying something, mm -hmm. seeing if it works or not. And then I, I it's kind of like agile development. Right? Oh yeah, like, definitely. Um, <laughs> it's like, waterfall you, you try something quickly you you iterate on it and yeah. if there's bugs along the way it's expected but you also need to come up with the fixes for those bugs quickly yeah so um, each cohort is a sprint yeah. <laughs> yeah. pretty much that's cool yeah and, and the staff is always talking about being a, an open door policy so feedback about the program I've, I've always heard feedback is always welcome they're always asking for feedback after pld mm -hmm. after refinery and just like all the time yeah. yeah just be cordial about your feedback mm -hmm. uh don't be mean <laughs> you like you give you draw more bees with the honey than yeah. vinegar that's what my grandmother says mm. yeah. always <laughs> say hello to keel the first before you ask them <laughs> exactly because <laughs> he will not <laughs> answer <laughs> but it's also a skill right like once you're working mm -hmm. you know and you feedback to your to your manager or to you know like someone higher up that feedback definitely should be welcomed, but you need to also approach it professionally, you yeah, know, like, absolutely. and so I think we try to mimic that here as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, with stand up, how to like present yourself to people. And just, oh, yes, the, I think the whole ecosystem of Holberton is trying to train you to become a professional software developer, like in all aspects, soft skills and mm -hmm. Definitely feels more like a workplace than a school. Right. So I, yeah, I would say yeah. pay attention to that too. Mm. Not just the technical. Yeah, yeah. Everything at Holbert like happens for a reason, mm -hmm. and it might not be like readily apparent, but there's a purpose. So like, if you get frustrated by like the checker, like there's a reason <laughs> you get frustrated by the checker. <laughs> oh, <fuck>. Yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll go into what the checker is uh, uh, the next one. Really, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll have some more time. <laughs> I think we need a whole webinar just dedicated. To <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. If any of you audience members are curious about the checker, tune in next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I do want to move on because um, I want to talk a little. I want to make sure that we can touch on some of the projects you guys actually did in the first three months. Um, I'm also going to take this opportunity for anyone who's listening. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put those in the Q and A, and we'll get to them at the very end. Um, but my question is: There's two big projects that you guys do in the first trimester. The first one is printf. Yes. The yes. second one is shell. Oh. Yes. Before we get to what the shell is, talk to me about what printf is, both the project and the actual concept of printf, mm -hmm. um, and what your like experience was of that project. Mm -hmm. 
Sammy, I'll let you take it. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I guess I did print up yeah. the most recent. Yeah. So I, I can speak to like what it's like now. Maybe maybe cover five had a different experience with it. But um Let's see. <laughs> I mean, uh, very basically, printf is a function uh, used in C and also Bash, I think. Uh, a command in Bash and a function in C that is, it's print formatting, so it formats the statement you want to print, where it is the standard output. Standard output is a term for what you see on your terminal. And so we are tasked in this project to create our own printf, to code it in C. And um, I, actually the most significant portion of this project is that's our first pair project so this is where we get introduced into peer learning uh, the most intimate way possible because you have to create this project you have to do this project and create this function with someone else in your cohort and it's ra totally randomly picked and uh, that that totally throws things out of order because until now you're doing it by yourself and uh, you have to learn to collaborate using online tools or Slack, which is our messaging platform. And uh, yeah, coordinating a project with another person is actually more difficult than you think. Yeah, merge conflicts. Yeah. <laughs> They're real. <laughs> number yeah. one, number one, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so how was your experience? Yeah. With Printf? With Printf. It was actually really good. My partner was very on task, just like I was, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so the, probably the worst thing is very different personalities and different, different ideas about presence and like physical presence versus remote. That's also something you get exposed to, which I think in the workplace is also significant. Yeah. I, uh, me and my partner have like two different ideologies like, when it comes to like planning, yeah, Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, when it comes to planning a project, like I'm very like organized. I'm like, okay, we need to, we need to figure out like what the what what it's gonna look like, like what our file structure is, how we're gonna organize everything. Yeah. And Kevin's just like, no, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> he, just, like, he just starts coding, and then like I'm like, yo, like can we figure out, can we figure out how this works? But uh, it was it was fun. Like we learned a lot from each other. Like I just like because I always like to plan everything out. But also learn to like think on the fly like as I'm doing it and he also learned like structure is important because <laughs> uh, there were instances where like we didn't know where a piece of code went or like where it came from yeah and I was like well if we were organized we'd know uh, but no I had a really good experience I learned a lot from that project I learned a lot yeah I learned a lot about like how our printf actually works mm -hmm. like the function just prints something to the screen like it just puts text like on your screen but the internals of it are like mm -hmm. insane like wow. we have to be like super thankful for the people who came before and like built like these basic functions these things like we take for granted because <laughs> yeah. like a lot of work went into making this like work and all you have to do yeah. is type in production. yeah all you have to do is like type a, like one line and it prints the screen but like everything that's happening yeah. underneath that like it's like a whole mountain of work beneath. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say I was also a planner type, so mm -hmm. I like to map out everything that we're doing before uh, we actually do it. Um, the thing is, uh, I think for me, what I struggled with was balancing the workload between my partner and I, because um, I guess we were kind of like fresh to the material, mm -hmm. so like uh, I was kind of pushing forward, but I have to make sure that my partner was catching up too so it's, it's something you have to like work with the whole time like you want to make sure that your partner understands um, exactly what you're doing and that you're communicating well with each other yeah. Yeah. it's a challenging project yeah yeah I think printf is very indicative of what separates Holborn from boot camps mm -hmm. because boot camps teach you how to do something while Holborn gives you that look into the why it works and how it works. And so printf is like a lot of our other projects, we actually build a lot of basic standard library functions. Uh, standard library is a collection of frequently used functions in C. And so we build a lot of these functions from scratch using very, very like vanilla C. And so printf is the biggest project like that. And so, t uh, yeah, it really shows how Holborn is trying to teach you how things work, not just what to do. Yeah, very true. Why is that important? Because in the end, you'll, 
I would say it extrapolates to a lot of a lot of other concepts. If you figure out how one thing works, usually you can figure out like, oh, this makes sense because this is the underlying reason, mm -hmm. and then you can easily uh, make sense of like higher level um, concepts. Yeah, another benefit is like once you know how something works, yeah. and there are a lot of people who don't know how that works, and the fact that you do like kind of sets you apart in a way, mm -hmm. like. If you tell any, like, if you, like, I go to a lot of meetups, like, if you go and you tell people, like, oh, what was your first language? And you're like, I learned C. And they're like, what? You learned C? Like, they're shocked and surprised because, like, everyone who works in this industry knows that, like, C is, like, like the lowest you can get. <laughs> and they're, like, impressed that you know how to, like, manage your memory and all of that. Like, that because otherwise people just use, like, library functions from whatever language they're using, but they don't understand. Like, they know what it does. But mm -hmm. the fact that you understand how it works, like, just kind of makes you a stronger program. Mm -hmm. And when you have that vision, it really gives you that overall, that holistic uh, perspective that allows you to problem solve way more uh, directly, whatever you're trying to problem solve. Because as an engineer, we're trying to build things, but sometimes you don't build things right and you need to fix whatever bugs or problems you may have in the build. So mm -hmm. having that knowledge of why or how is very important in being able to be a good you know fixer and as well as builder yeah, yeah that's good sam <laughs> um so the other big project um we have about 10 minutes left the other the other big project is the shell project mm -hmm. uh so similar to how you kind of explain c i'd love to know first of all like what is the shell um, and then maybe you talk a little about the project and your experience of that. Okay. Uh, well, I'll take a shell. Yeah. Uh, so a shell is how like you as a human like talk to your computer essentially. Um, when it comes to like creating files, uh, like writing text, like before there was like Windows like ninety five and like these graphical user interfaces, it was just this like command line like uh powershell like power prompt like uh, just a line and you would type in like commands and tell the computer what to do and that's how people used to like write on computers um it was like basically it wasn't the first but it's like right before we got like how we understand computers today this is how people communicated with the computer to do tasks and so we basically take like that most basic version of a computer and build it from scratch in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. another partner project. Yeah. Right? And it's oh, actually, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like double printed up. Uh, I say it's like five times printed <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think that was the hardest. Um, the yeah, that one, one, like. I like Monty the most. Mm, I did. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not just, like, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to Monty. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but uh, Shell is like, Shell is a doozy. Like, it's a culmination of, it's basically the first three months. Like, that's what Shell represents. Like, if you pass Shell, like, you've gotten over the heart, like, the largest hump <laughs> in the program. This is the hardest project. Yeah. Like, once you understand this project, everything else is, like, a piece of cake. But like, consi like, considering, I mean, there are, I can't speak for everyone, but, like, yeah, this project, like, we got a week break after and I needed it. Like I felt yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really felt it. But uh it was very rewarding. Like when it works, like you'll hear people like screaming like at the top of their lungs because they're so excited that they got it to work. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of memories. Yeah. <laughs> we passed like all green checks on the first go. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, but more about the check. <laughs> relating shell to like printf printf is kind of like a cog inside of shell because yeah. shell has this very basic foundational engine and then you build the peripherals to it so kind of like a car you build the engine then you build the body then you build the tires and you build the steering wheel and you put on the interior shells like that like you start with the engine and then you build out from there and printf was just like a wheel yeah. like <laughs> shell. Yeah. basically <laughs> yeah. yeah. In terms of um, teamwork, I would say like that was a, it, it was a lot better. Like progressively, you'll find yourself um, getting better with collaborating as you do the larger projects that we do, um, because you'll always get paired with a partner. So I'd say 
yeah, it's a skill that I personally deliberately try to improve on. Why, why do you think that project is in the curriculum? I actually heard that um, most college computer science courses have this project too. I feel like mm -hmm. it utilizes lower level concepts and then um, allows you to make um, a working product that's not a web app, but it's yeah. a functioning like booster. Like, oh, I made something that works. Wait, software engineering is more than just web apps? <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Oh no, I think it's in there because like everything that you learn in three months, like managing memory, pointers, uh, all of that like happens inside of Shell and it's taking like those concepts, like those programming concepts and like fully using them in the like simplest application of, of like a computer. Like you're basically building a virtual like interface to talk to your computer. And yeah, it's the perfect project to prove that you actually understood everything that you learned these yeah. last three months. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Spencer is very right. That's not, it's not just like, it, it, it is, it's very holistic about everything we do in Holborn, but I also think it's your first look into building like a product or something that's functional that you can put out into the real world because you're collaborating, you're building something people would use, you're using all the knowledge that you gained until then. And that's like everything you do in industry, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our curriculum is very cumulative. So it's like everything you learn, you find out that you can apply it to, to produce something working, like yeah. a final product. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So cool. We could probably continue talking about yeah. the, first, the first trimester for, for quite a bit longer. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably for a whole trimester. Yeah, yeah. probably. Um, but we are, um, we're at that point where I want to address um, some questions from the okay. audience. Yeah. Um, we have one right now. Um, I'm also going to just do a public service announcement, announcement for anyone who is listening. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot those to us, but try to keep them specifically geared towards the conversation we've had um, or like the first three months of the program. If you have other questions, uh, you can email them to me. Um, so I do have one from Javier, and Javier wants to know uh, what your backgrounds are before entering Holberton, um, and yeah. had you had any experience coding before? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go ahead, Becky. Okay. Uh, well, I was a pre-med uh, mm -hmm. student in college, um, and then I graduated with a biochemistry degree, but I uh, towards my second semester in junior year, I started to veer towards math and computer science. Um, so then after I graduated, I decided to pursue computer science. And then I found Holberton. Um, I was a chef <laughs> before this. Uh, I had a little bit of prior experience. I like tried to make a video game with C++ once. So I knew, I knew about pointers and other things, but that was like probably like five years ago. So it had been a while, but yeah. Yeah, um, I recently graduated Cal Poly with, uh, with philosophy. So that was my major in college. And I've always been sort of exposed to coding. Like my early education actually had some coding in the curriculum. But most recently, I've just like, I learned some Python, but I had no knowledge of C whatsoever. And, uh, and, and the first three months were not impossible. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thrived. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. I definitely found the thing that I wanted to do when I got here. Yeah. Like, this was like, Holbert was like the best, right. the best thing for me. Yeah. This question wasn't asked, but I'm curious. I always like to know, what, what made you guys decide Holberton over um, pursuing a more traditional path or something like, you, you had mentioned boot camps earlier or something online. What was your kind of catalyst for choosing this school? Um, so I had the option to stay for another semester to compute, uh, complete a computer science degree, but at the time, twenty thousand dollars seemed like a lot. But like, so Holberton doesn't have doesn't have upfront tuition. Um, you pay like seventy percent of your salary over the course of three and a half years, I think, and then um, so that was appealing. Second is that I also looked through a lot of reviews through course report and such I think. And um, 
Hoverton's ranked really high. It's it's reassuring that they're investing in their students because they're you're not required to pay up front. And then it's also um, project based. So a lot of what employers look for is that you can actually create um, apps or like working products to to showcase. And um, since Holberton is like every day you're doing a project and you're doing like larger projects within the curriculum, it was kind of, uh, it was what I was looking for essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially the same for me, yeah. basically. And for me, it was more the, most so about the fact that boot camps want 16,000 up front and I didn't have $16,000 in the bank. And Holberton seemed like a good fit for the peer and project-based learning, yeah. but also because they're like they don't get paid until I get a job, so like there's like that that vested interest in me like succeeding. Yeah, definitely all of that um, is pretty good. Uh, I had found Holborn through some different avenues, but originally I was doing pre med like Becky, and I just decided that I didn't want to do that anymore, and then went towards something I was interested in, computers, and I was gonna go for like a master's. I was gonna pursue maybe like a higher degree and do it in a computer science focus. But when I found out about Holborn, I started doing my research. Not a lot of boot camps do like a two year program that really does a deep dive into a full stack software engineering curriculum. So that appealed a lot to me, like to get that comprehensive education. Yeah, most boot camps focus on specific technologies. You want to react in three months. Right. And <laughs> it's yeah. like, whereas Holberton, you like learn low level, learn data structures, algorithms, and then high level. Mm -hmm. Build a um, web server. Yeah, oh, even yeah. DevOps, sysadmin stuff too. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely it's holistic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, well, I think those are all the questions that we have right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, for any of you guys who are joining us um, from the webinar, um, in two weeks we'll be doing our next set, uh, which will be focusing on the first year here at the school. So we'll have some people who have gone through the entire first year curriculum. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that was like. Um, and uh, just thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Oh, yeah.